Hello, one and all. One of your favorite moviegoers, Alex here, once again. It's August, and the summer that wasn't saga continues. The summer movie season that never happened continues. Looks like a pretty good bet that we will not have any summer movie season like we normally would. I think Tenet was supposed to start it off uh, maybe the end of this month or beginning of next month or some point. I don't see that happening. Cases are spiking of coronavirus and it's putting a damper on a lot of things, especially things we love like movies. You'll see them in a different location because it's a lot easier to be sitting in a chair than crouching down in front of all those DVDs that you saw in the background before. And uh, so here we are, August, and a lot of August movies round out the summer. The summer movie season officially ends at the end of August. So why not do this again? A lot of good movies came out that uh, you'll see. Um, most notably, The Fugitive was a big release in 1993. I was working at the Comac Multiplex at the time, and it was the last movie that the employees, at least when I was working there, got to see for free before it opened. Uh, I think we saw it Thursday. And it was great just to have the movie theater to ourselves. I think we saw it at like midnight or something like that. Because a lot of the theaters have to run the movie to make sure all the kinks and stuff are worked out so we get to see it for free, might as well. And of course, it was a big hit. It was even nominated for an Oscar. Great one. Another movie that was nominated for an Oscar that came out of nowhere was one of the best surprises, The Sixth Sense. That came out in 99, August. And it was number one for a while. Who knew? I mean, it's such a crazy concept and obviously a perfect title, The Sixth Sense. We've got to see what that's about. Um, what else do I have on my list? <laughs> I actually have this one, Dirty Dancing. Yeah, that came out in August 1987. A long time ago. The coming of age story. That's timeless. You've had the time of your life. <laughs> Oof. I actually didn't like it at first, but I've grown to enjoy it. My dad really got into it, and he loved the soundtrack. He'd watch it like almost every week. So it grew on me. What else do I have here? Um... Well, Sex, Lies, and Videotape came out in 89. One of my favorite independent films ever. Such a good one. What else do I have? Oh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Rebooting already an awesome, well, original saga. Maybe the first one was the best, but they decided to redo this and make it more of an origin story of how the apes came to become so intelligent, and it was such a great start. This first one was awesome. It did great uh, stuff for the franchise and revitalize and you've popped out two more sequels after that. Curious to see if they keep going. What else do I have here? Action movies? Yes. I was working at the Comac Multiplex when this sucker came out. It was, as I don't break the thing, hard target was Jean-Claude Van Damme. This was the first movie that John Woo directed here in America with an action star. And it was very enjoyable. Good action flick if you're in the mood for that. Now, here's a guilty pleasure. A lot of people may not agree, but there's something about Masters of the Universe that I really enjoy. Even though the costumes are different from the cartoon and it takes place on Earth a lot. Well, good old Courtney Cox in the movie. There's something about the costumes and just the craziness of it that I, I'm guilty of enjoying. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the greatest movie, but it is certainly an enjoyable flick and an interesting take on He-Man and the rest of the gang. Check it out if you're curious. The Abyss was the most expensive movie to be made at the time for a whopping $50 million in 1989 money. James Cameron did a great job, introduced the morphing effect in that movie for the first time. Um, so much more. The, the uh, director's cut those the one you got to see because it makes it gives you a better explanation of why these underwater creatures exist. So I got the double disc back in the day. This was good too, G.I. Jane. 
even though she's a Marine. <laughs> but that's what they went for. Demi Moore did good. It's, we'll make it away through the Marine Corps. What were other notable things? Look out. The MCU had one entry in August. Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. It was a good surprise. I didn't, uh, I don't like Guardians of the Galaxy. That's the next comic book uh, team they're going to put out there. And it was a great surprise what they did. I am Groot. <laughs> Stakeout. I don't own Stakeout. But that was a good one. Richard, Richard Dreyfus and Emilio Estevez staking out the house. So funny. So well done. What else? Ah, ha, ha. Well, we have some of the comedies. There was a lot of comedies. In 89, this was a good one by Ron Howard, Parenthood. Such an enjoyable ensemble comedy. Steve Martin heading the cast. Oop, I just dusted his wee-wee. <laughs> Steve Martin. Let's try that again. <laughs> but a very fun family film. Well, fam family about family. There's some parts that aren't for families, but it's PG-13, so you can see some stuff. This is one you definitely don't want to bring your kids to. <laughs> Definitely not. The 40-year-old virgin with the one and only Steve Carell. Very funny. This was a big surprise, and I'm sure it helped his career. I mean, he was not too well-known until this sucker came out. Really funny. This is Easy Money. Great one with Joe Pesci and the one and only Rodney Dangerfield. Hilarious. And one cute thing in this movie that I didn't even realize when my wife and I watched it, and I think we were... I don't know if we were married yet or dating, but I think... Rodney Dangerfield's character has to lose weight by a certain date, I think, or something in the movie. There's a significant date, and it happens to be October 13th, which is our anniversary. That was really a funny surprise. Yeah, I definitely can't take the kids to see any of these movies, but Jane Silent Bob Strike Back came out, rounding out the uh, first part of These Guys Saga. It was such a funny comedy. Good an enjoyable sequel with these guys doing their thing. Comic book fans rejoice. Another great comedy. Rat Race. This was a big surprise. It was in the vein of it's a mad, 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 mad world with an ensemble cast trying to find this, uh, find a way to get from Vegas to, oh shoot, I forgot, a small town and had to get the, uh, the money bag or whatever is the grand prize and they do everything in their power to do to get there and so many zany shenanigans happen i laughed my ass off when i saw this and here's the classic definitely can't have the kids see this but fast times at ridgemont high another ensemble piece creating stars like the one and only sean penn hey bud let's party other people like phoebe cates judge reinhold uh, jennifer jason lee forrest whitaker it launched so many careers it was uh, one of those seminal coming-of-age teen romps you got to check out when you're older. Okay. Speaking of teen romps, weird science. The one and only John Hughes is reunited with Anthony Michael Hall and, of course, Kelly LeBrock, the woman they created. What, do you, what would you little maniacs like to do first? <laughs> Such a fun film, and Bill Paxton as Chet. <laughs> such great classic lines. I mean, it's such a fun movie when John Hughes got to be a little crazy and let his imagination go wild with those guys. I don't know why I want to end with this, but this was a this was that summer, 2001, where comedies reigned supreme, in my opinion. Jam Silent Bob Strike Back was from that year, and so was this awesome sequel, Rush Hour 2, which made a fortune. Reuniting Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. And it was a fun, enjoyable romp. Guys capturing the magic again. It was a fun summer. Anything else that I, I don't have that is worthy, worthy of noting? Tropic Thunder. <laughs> that was a funny flick with Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., and Jack Black. Stardust was one that you may not, if you've seen that one, it's a great fantasy movie and very touching at the end. Simone, Simone was a, a nice surprise with Al Pacino. If you haven't seen that, check it out. The Expendables trilogy, they all came out in August. I just saw them maybe last year for the first time. 
So those were pretty darn good, man. There's other ones that came out. Oh, Desperado. Nice sequel to El Mariachi. But Antonio Banderas took, out the, took over the role. The Thomas Crown Affair remake with P.S. Brosnan. Another enjoyable film from that magic year of 99. <laughs> A terrible title. Dick. <laughs> that also came out in 99. But it was about Richard Nixon. But the, ta you know, the movie reviews were really, you'll love Dick. They couldn't, <laughs> another title for that movie? Oh! Boatfinger, another one from 99, which was pretty enjoyable. There were some monster flicks that came up in, this, in that time that you're going to be surprised. Starting with American Werewolf in London. It actually came out in August. I did not know that. A movie I was really afraid to watch, but have since watched it in its... A definite uh, cult classic. A Oscar-winning wolf transformation scene. And a definite Halloween movie to watch. Teen Wolf came out that same year. Uh, not same year. Uh, same month. But that was also 85, the same year that Back to the Future came out. So Michael J. Fox had a one-two punch. And then Monster Squad came out the summer, too. August. I enjoyed it at the time. I definitely thought it was a fun film, especially... Yes, you know what I'm talking about. You'd want to be in the Monster Squad if you were a kid, too. You know, those were some fun kids. You'd want to be in that. The Beastmaster. Yes, The Beastmaster was a movie I had to see. Like, oof. And it was enjoyable at the time. What are you doing, you black cat? There was no movies with black cats back then, was there? Blade came out. It was way before the MCU, and that's a Marvel character. And he came out in 1998. It's great. Great role. Wesley Snipes was perfect for the role. And oh, yeah. I think I said, well, Super Bad came out. I don't know that, but it's such a funny movie. I love that one. And The Bourne Ultimatum was that same year, 2007. That was the year of the trilogies. Spider-Man 3, uh, the third Pirates movie, the third Shrek, third Rush Hour, and Bourne Ultimatum was probably the best one of the three to come out. That was a good, solid sequel. All right. Well, that little snafu, uh, notwithstanding, revisit some old movies. I mean, there's plenty of things you can see that are streaming, but there's some enjoyable ones that came out in August. Don't, don't uh, you know, leave August in the wind. Don't forget, August is still a summer movie month, and there's still some awesome movies that came out in that month. So, check out all the trailers that I have listed, the movies I mentioned. There's a few I haven't, but you'll check it out, see it. See them there listed, and uh, I might continue this in September, even though it's not a summer movie thing, but I had some fun movies, that enjoyable movies that came out in uh, August. Um, <laughs> I had some fun movies that came out in September, too, so I think I'll just keep this tradition going. But list some of your favorite August movies. If there's one that I haven't, I haven't mentioned, please mention them below and uh, let me know. As always... It's been real, and stay safe, and hey, relive some of your favorite summer movies in August, as I'm going to. Until then, see ya.